Okay, so we're working uh, to the case. Then we have Beijing Hyundai Motor Corporation. So who read about that part? <coughs> Beijing Motor Hyundai Corporation. Who read this part? Uh, so this is the fourth largest producer in China. We saw the other ones. Okay. So a strong performer. Uh, they introduce new every year. They introduce new mod models. We saw that they want some new excitement in the market. Okay. Uh, <coughs> They made a contract uh, with, for taxis, so they made a contract for taxis, which helped their company. Made the brand exposure. Do you understand brand exposure? So this is one thing that helped their brand, people to know the brand and increase the sales. So this is in Beijing, right? It's Beijing Hyundai Motor Company. So we can see the advantage of the joint venture for Hyundai. Okay, maybe if they didn't have the joint venture with the Beijing Motor Company, they might not be able to organize those kind of deals, right? They need to have some uh, way of uh, making the tender to the Chinese government. Obviously, the Beijing Motor Company is better at making a tender. Do you understand tender? Tender is when a company, the government has some contract, and they ask the companies to make an application. Okay? So the companies make an application. We want to do this. Okay? So if we do the joint venture, then the Beijing company can help a lot when we're making the tender, applying to get the contract from the government, that kind of thing. So, uh, they had the Elantra, do you know the Elantra? Yeah. Was their uh, ideal family car, and it's their best selling car along in uh, China. Uh, the NFU Shang was not doing well, as we mentioned in the introduction. Uh, so they have... Uh, also after sales service in China. So let's move down to the branding strategy. <coughs> so branding strategy of Hyundai and, and Kia who wrote read that part. I'm missing a couple of people. Who read, yeah, who read about the branding strategy? No, I read name and logo. Name and logo, yes, okay. That's the one. Yeah. So what about the name and logo? Mm. You can see on the page, right? Can you combine the brand logo with the logo and company name? And also they have a Chinese name in Korea as well. Okay. Mm. And then when Hyundai went to the, went into China, mm -hmm. uh, they retained the uh, their shape logo mm -hmm. uh, in all corporate communication, mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, Beijing Hyundai adopted the Chinese name of Hyundai in Korea, and they combined it with. The local Chinese part Yes. So this is their global one, right? Hyundai, drive your way in English. Then in China, they have this one. Okay? Can you read Chinese characters, Korean students? No? But luckily for Hyundai, if we say Shan, Shandai. So it's pronounced Shandai. Shandai means modern and stylish, right? In uh, Chinese. So 
So we can see that they keep the logo similar, okay? The H logo, just as a side point, the H means the worker is shaking hands with the management, right? Can you see here a worker shaking hands with the management? Hmm? No? That's what it's supposed to mean, right? And put in China, it's Beijing Hyundai. So they change to Chinese writing. And this is Hyundai and this is Beijing. But keep the logo in English. Drive your way. Okay? So they could translate this to Chinese, but they kept in English. So we can see the quote here by the president. When we do business in China, we need to use the local language to communicate with the customers. So our name should be in Chinese too. So that's why they wanted to make this one. It has English and Chinese. Okay? Name in Chinese to communicate with the customers. <laughs> so actually China made a law later that uh, all the names should be also in Chinese. Okay. Uh, so Toyota also used international and Chinese names on their logo. So next one is brand positioning. So who read about the brand positioning? We have brand positioning. Who read about that part? There should be two people who read about brand positioning. Okay, so uh, Hyundai announced that it had a global brand management uh, strategy. So Hyundai and Kia have the different images. Uh, so, we talked about that with L'Oreal, right? So, Hyundai and Kia actually is the same company, right? But they use the different brands and separate the brands, okay? So, Hyundai is refined, they write down the words they, what they want to make, refined and confident by brand positioning. So, drive your way is like communicating that we're refined and confident. Drive your way is like confident, right? Uh, <coughs> so this is like their global, global positioning of Hyundai. Then who read about the brand power? Yes, what can you tell me? Anybody? In Chinese market, Hyundai and Kia will just conduct a vertical study by using the API, the consumer purchase process. Okay. So we can look at that on the, I think we can look at that as another example of primary research. Okay. Uh, So what are what can you tell us about the BPI? Mm. The market average was set at one hundred. Mm -hmm. And if the index number higher than one hundred, a brand considered having above market performance. So and the BPI is ninety nine. I guess on the, on the next page, you can see in the 
page, that's a second. So this is the brand power, right? So it means that uh, all of these things, like awareness, familiarity, consideration in the consumer product, all of those things together that we already saw, tells us the brand power. Okay, and we can see that average 100, so BMC very close to the average, but other brands are doing better in the brand power, which is all the awareness and so on together. We also can look at this, uh, what you mentioned at the, the start, this is the brand image positioning of uh, the BMHC, right? So this is another diagram they make. They have all the different adjectives like smart, exciting, dynamic, confident, aggressive, okay? Refined, thoughtful, practical. They ask the consumer, what do you think about the brand, okay? What's your idea? And then we can put the different brands on the different places in the different positioning. So B, H, M, C is not so much practical. Kia would be closer to practical. Do you understand practical? Yeah. Not many extra things that, right? But it's down here with stylish and refined and thoughtful. Okay? Uh, so, again, just finding out about people's ideas. Okay. Uh, we, so we already mentioned about the funnel analysis and the, the, uh, this funnel analysis, right? Which includes all of these things, the awareness, the familiarity, the opinion, and the consideration. We asked the consumers about that. So then uh, let's move on to the uh, car branding of Beijing Motor Company. So who read the part on the car branding? Uh, we have name and logo here. Name and logo, yes. Chinese name based on translation. So it's quite uh, similar, right? Suonata instead of Sonata. Here's another example. Ilantra was Ilantra. Ilantra. Or Ilantra. Is it easy to say Ilantra, Chinese students? Is it easy to say il Ilantra in, Korean, in Chinese language? No. No, so you think that's okay? Similar? <laughs> uh, it's a little bit similar, but still, the last part, last syllable, and we translated it by using Chinese characters. Okay. What about the accent? Accent is Yeah, Shen Tei, that's a little bit different, right? Yeah. Accent. Accent. Ilantra, Sonata. Okay, anything else? Okay. It's a two charm, which means wind in the journey. So we can see, I don't know if you can see here, maybe you saw in the case study. We can see here sonata written in English, right? And then sonata written in Chinese. And then Chinese students, what is written underneath in Chinese? What does it kind of translate? What is this? Oh. Mm, but underneath, what's written at the bottom? Means like you're driving confidently and freely. 
Yeah, so it's the slogan, right? Yeah. But they did, in the, different than Hyundai, they made the Chinese slogan. Okay. Uh, Elantra, similar. Okay, the Chinese and Chinese slogan and accent one. Okay. Uh, what about the NF Yu Shang? Yes. Yeah. was only contacted by BHMC with the local Chinese branding. Yes. In fact, this car model was named so as in other parts of the world as premium extension of the original Sonata brand. So we have premium Sonata brand. Do you understand premium? So a different type of Sonata, Sonata NF, premium brand. But they changed the name, they didn't call Sonata. They called it NF, Yu Xiang. So we can see here, right, no English, just NF, and just the Chinese name, and the Chinese slogan. So just Chinese brand, not international brand. Okay. And then the last part is the positioning. Who read the positioning? Part. Yes, what's the positioning? Uh, following the corporate uh, branding strategy of Smoke was added to the brand identity of each car brand. So they made a local slogan based on the characteristics of their consumers, right? So they changed the slogan of the cars based on the characteristics of consumers. Okay, anything else? What kind of example did they give here? Oh, accent, oh, for example, accent or oh, target the urban regeneration. Generation mm -hmm. twenty three to thirty three with monthly income of six hundred thirty three dollars to one thousand two hundred sixty five dollars. So we can see that depending on the country, we can have a different. The accent can be targeted at a different market. Okay? China is marketed at this age group, so they use this slogan, right? Starting a new journey. It's relevant for their target market. Okay? Uh, so, we have other examples of slogans. Maneuverability as prior priority, the supreme vehicle, and the only one for you. So, instead of just translating the English slogan that they use in Korea or in another country, they just make their own slogan in Chinese. Do you understand slogan? Okay, so then that finishes uh, the information. So we get to the next step on page 17. The next step is related. So that when we read the introduction and the conclusion, we get the idea about the problem of the case, right? So the next, who read the next step? Yes? So what is the next step, or what is the problem for the case? Uh, the president of the DHMC is considered a strategic planning issue to maximize and expand the business in China. Okay, they want to expand the business. <coughs> yes. So, what kind of questions do they have to do? Well, about um, a local Chinese branding mm -hmm. and was enough to compete with other companies. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> the plan of launching more new cars, target segments, and dealing with cooperation branding of Hyundai in China. Okay, so they are not, they had a bad experience maybe with the local Chinese branding with the NF. So they're launching new cars. So what should they do about the branding? Okay, they're going to launch more cars. What should they do about the branding of the car? Okay, so that's the main 
question, right? Yeah. Global branding or local branding. So then let's, uh, you guys are going to, you can pass around this one. You guys are going to decide about uh, selling this car. You're going to make a brand and brand strategy for the car. But first we'll talk about uh, the brand a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about brand elements and brand strategy. Okay? And we'll look at the your evaluation. Using those things, we'll ask, what do you think about the branding strat current branding strategy of Hyundai? And then that can help us to make the branding strategy for the other one. going to talk about is the brand elements. Okay, so here we can see the logo, brand elements, logo, trademark. Do you understand trademark? Yeah. Mm, symbols and slogans. So we saw mainly logo and symbol, slogan in this uh, one, right? The slogan is a short phrase. We saw Hyundai had refined the drive your way. They wanted to communicate the, to find you confident. But for brand elements, we have a researcher called Kevin Kelleher who suggests we should have these six attributes to make it good. A logo or a good slogan. Number one is memorable. Do you understand memorable? Yeah. Can you remember what is Hyundai's slogan? Is that memorable? Easy to remember? Yes. Yes. Can you remember the H in the circle? Yes. Could you draw Hyundai's logo if you were asked? Yes. Okay. The next one is meaningful. So we said that Hyundai had the meaning, also the accent, the car, the accent car had the meaning, like starting a new journey, so it's meant to be meaningful for the consumer. Okay, likability, Likeabil it should be likable, so likable, people should like it, right, we don't want to have a scary logo or mascot, do you know mascot? Do you, some, they try to make the mascot very likeable for the World Cup or that kind of thing. Can you remember the mascot for the 2002 World Cup in Korea? <laughs> Not really. Mm -hmm. uh, transferability. So we can use it in different areas. Transfer, we can use it in the US. We can use it in another country. Like Hyundai is using Drive Your Way in every country. Adaptability. We can change it a little bit. And protectability. So it should be, if you're making a logo, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't make the logo or the slogan of a car which already exists or something which already exists. It should be unique. Okay? This is the element you will need to make for your car, you'll make, need to make some slogan and a logo, okay? So you need to think about those things. And then we need to think about the strategy, the branding strategy. So we have four main strategies. Uh, first one is the house of brand strategy. <clears throat> this is... Uh, Gloria, right? Unconnected brands. So we don't want the brands to be connected. Do you understand house? House of brands? With different rooms, different brand in each room. Okay? 
uh, because we have different market segments. L'Oreal has different market segments, okay? So Hyundai and Kia is kind of using that because they split up Hyundai and they split up Kia, even though it's the same head company, right? Uh, next one is endorsed brand. Do you understand to be endorsed? Usually the sports star can endorse a product. The sports star says, this product is very good. That's called endorsement. So, uh, we have like the global brand is the driver. So, the global brand is endorsing the smaller brand, right? So Hyundai might endorse the accent. So mainly we see the accent, but how much Hyundai do we see on the car? How much do we know that the accent is associated with Hyundai, okay? The car that you're doing is the Equus, right? You have to think, how strong should Hyundai be visible on this car? Should Hyundai be very visible or not very visible, right? So endorsing means not very visible, just a little bit visible, okay? Uh, the next one is the sub-brand strategy. Uh, so, we have, this one is there closer, we have the two brands, with a master brand and a sub-brand, but it's clearer that, like, maybe the Hyundai Accent, okay? So, we can see that it's Hyundai, okay? Hyundai is master brand, and then the Accent is sub-brand. So, a little bit similar to the endorsed brand, but endorsed brand is just very slightly, we see the main brand. But sub-brand is very obvious we see the main brand. Almost like the two of them are equal. Okay? And then the last one is the branded house strategy. <coughs> so, in this case, the master brand is uh, dominant, so we hardly see the sub-brand, okay? So it makes the list from here, where we don't see any master brand, okay? Every, each one has their own brand. So here, slightly master brand is visible, here almost equal, and here mainly master brand, and then just a very small emphasis on the uh, <coughs> sub-brand. Okay, so that's the brand elements and brand strategy. So we are going to discuss about what do you think about the corporate branding of Hyundai. So we are going to think, talk about the strength and the weakness. You can think about these things. Do you understand the corporate branding? So corporate is, Hyundai is the corporation, right? Accent is underneath, is the sub-brand. So corporate branding, so plus and minus. So discuss with your partner. Look at Hyundai's, I'll put up here on the PDF also. So look at Hyundai's branding of Hyundai, right? And talk about what do you think? What's positive and negative about their branding, strategy, and elements? to talk about the Beijing Hyundai market corporation, right? So here we have the name and the logo, the strategy. So this is global one and this is the one they're using in China. Okay. So what do you think is the strength and weakness of this, this logo and slogan? setup that Hyundai is using. So discuss with your partner. What is the positive point, what is the negative point?
So then let's discuss about the branding of the uh, car types. Okay. What do you think? So that was the Hyundai Beijing company, right? The corporate. But now what about the cars? Positive and negative. What do you think about the branding and the strategy of this kind of branding? So again, if I ask you, you should tell me at least one strength and one weakness of you think of this strategy. Okay? If they have the individual Chinese language, in the bit localized slogan, right? They have Chinese and English. Okay? So look at the branding and tell me what to think about it. Each character has his own menu in just about three or one or three. So they can um, engrave on you, you, positive So you can't give me back, you won't have enough time to do that today. Uh, actually, we won't have enough time today, so if we do it on the next part, you can give me back page. Thank you. 
for the corporate one. Hyundai, what's positive about their branding? You don't think anything is positive? <laughs> it's more likable. Yeah. Think it's likable? Yeah. Anything else? The slogan is memorable. <laughs> memorable? He's got that. Is it meaningful? What part is meaningful? Mm -hmm. Slogan is meaningful. Drive your way. Does that mean refined and confident to you? Yes? Mm -hmm. Any negatives? Minuses? Costs more. Costs more. What costs more? Well, you need to create the, the identification for each one. Uh, we didn't come to that part. Well, okay, a little bit customized, but just the corporate one. That's more for the. It's more for the. We have to change it a little bit because it's in Chinese, right? We need to change all the things. Okay. So it's a bit of a cost. Okay, anything else? Leaving a poor image. Why? Uh, what do you think it has a poor image? Like you hear it uh, on the phone, the they, uh, they belong to him then. But uh, actually, as Beijing and the CG has already used it and Sonata as taxis and the street. So it leaves the uh, Chinese people a poor image of this brand. Because it's more like a local brand? No. Right, and the first name is Beijing, right? So you think that the Beijing, using the first name, first they have Beijing and then they have Shundai. So they call Beijing Shundai? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, mm. you know, the products like the Iran mm. and the uh, Sonata, the two kinds of cars, mm. um, they have already been used as taxis. You can see it anywhere. So it looks a, a kind of poor work. This brand is not that really valuable to Chinese people. Okay. Even though uh, Hyundai, uh, this company has a premium like, product. Okay, so you're talking about the strategy. The strategy. So you think the strategy of the taxis gives a poor image, even though it increased the awareness. Okay. So another point there is that. Uh, we put first Beijing and then Hyundai. Okay, so it may be that people not, might not be aware, the awareness could be lower. Because they put in, first in the name is Beijing, and second the name is Hyundai. So if they put maybe the other way around, it could be more awareness. People would be more aware of the global brand. Right? 
So Chinese students, what do you think about the name in Chinese? Do you prefer the name in Chinese or prefer the name in English? Why? So anyway, the name affects the global branding. If we change the name to Chinese, we saw it's different a little bit. It's Xian Die, right? So people may not understand that fully that's the global brand. So global branding can be a negative point because we change the name to a Chinese name and the Chinese character. Okay? Some people mightn't make the connection, even though they see the they mightn't know the logo. Okay? Uh, then, uh, of course, as you said, the positive point is the Chinese name is more uh, comfortable for Chinese people. So we have some pros and cons, right? Okay, and then we can make for the cars, for the car brands, anything we can add here for the individual car brands, about the strength and the weakness. Chinese students, what do you think? About the Elantra and the accent and so on. What do you think about the branding? similar points here. Okay. Then just finally about the the Xu Xiang. We had uh, the Xu Xiang is the Chinese one. What do you think about the the NFU Xiang? With just the Chinese branding, just Chinese name and no English name. Oh, uh, it sounds more aggressive actually. Mm -hmm. Too aggressive? Yeah. So we could have the negative point, it could be aggressive. Okay, and your other students, what do you think about the branding of the Yu Xiang? Doesn't have any English name. What's a negative point? We saw that the sales were lower for the Yu Xiang compared to the ones the Sonata and the Elantra. Do you think that's because of the branding? <coughs> Why? Maybe the, quality. Hmm? Maybe the quality as well. So it's not linked this one is not so linked to the international brand, right? Not linked to the international brand. Because it, no, we don't see any English, right? And it has no it has no association with Sonata, so they don't get the advantage of the uh, overseas success. Sonata was a very successful car overseas, okay? Uh, so, also it was a premium car. This is a premium car, but branding didn't communicate the meaningful, right? It doesn't communicate premium. 
maybe the Hyundai uh, brand may communicate premium, right? Do you understand premium? But uh, that the simple and all, all Chinese language branding didn't uh, communicate that it was a premium brand. So then, just in the next class, you're going to launch the luxury sedan called the Equus, and uh, you will need to make the name. Okay, are you going to keep the same name, Equus? You will need to make a symbol and slogan. Okay, so we'll do that in the next class. Just you can think about that before. So let's finish there for today. Thank <laughs> you.